welcome to A Conspiracy in the Force, the show where we examine parallel conspiracies in a galaxy far, far away, in a galaxy not so far away. The show is designed as an introduction to modern day conspiracy theories by using Star Wars, one of the most beloved fictional universes, as a point of reference. Let's begin. Hey, Conspiracy Kyle here. If you like this podcast, please rate, subscribe, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. It greatly helps out the show, and it's much appreciated. Also, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Conspiracy underscore Kyle, and that's Conspiracy with a K. Also, follow me on YouTube at Conspiracy Kyle, once again, with a K. And also, now you can find me on the Rockfin Network at rockfin.com with new exclusive content. Now on to the show. Hey, Conspiracy Kyle here. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas weekend with your family in person. And this episode that I'll be playing today is an excerpt from my new book, Intergalactic Totalitarianism. There's a section that I talk about different um, tactics that totalitarian regimes inflict on the people in order to gain more and more control. So I wanted to read one chapter from the book for everybody today on gun control. This is one of the tactics that I, I discuss in ways that it's used in our universe, and then how gun control is used in Star Wars, and it's not necessarily what you think. So stay tuned, check it out. Links in the show notes uh, to my book. If you haven't purchased it or you want to read more information about it, I would definitely appreciate it. So thank you to everybody who's already reached out and has purchased so far. It really means a lot. So I hope you enjoy. Another note is over the next few weeks, I'll be releasing some new shows in regards to the new Book of Boba Fett series that will be coming out here on Wednesday um, before the new year. So new episodes of that show will drop every week. And I'm planning on doing a a short reaction podcast every week discussing some of the new elements that are introduced in the show and any conspiracies or any interesting social cues that they have thrown in there. You know, there's always something good when you have Disney. So anyway, stay tuned for that. May the force be with you. Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. Chapter 14, Tactics of Totalitarians, Gun Control Joseph Stalin, quote, If the opposition disarms, well and good. If it refuses to disarm, we shall disarm it ourselves. End quote. Quote from Rick O'Lee, commander of the Naboo Royal Space Fighter Corps from the Phantom Menace novelization, quote, We have no weapons, Ambassador. We are non-violent people, which is why the Trade Federation was brave enough to attack us in the first place. End quote. One solution that many authoritarians have used throughout history to silence the masses is to control the ownership of firearms. This tactic allows them the means to simultaneously quell possible rebellions and suppress political opposition without impunity. As discussed in the introduction, authoritarians don't start out their campaigns by stomping on the people's heads to get them in line. Subversive strategies need to be used to gain support for their causes. This is especially true with gun control. If you just start taking people's firearms without provocation, the fight will be on. The subversion tactic used here is to get the public to believe that guns are mostly used for criminal means. Therefore, gun control measures need to be taken for the safety of the public. Remember, most everything the authoritarians do is sold as a means to keep people safe, which of course is upside down logic. It's like giving a burglar your guns and money because it'll keep you safe. Mind you, there's no stopping the burglar from shooting you in the head once you lose the means to defend yourself. At this point, we need to talk about false flag events. If you're not familiar with what a false flag is, here's a quick history lesson. 
Hundreds of years ago, pirate ships would sail the seas, flying the flag of a friendly nation to avoid being seen as pirates. Whenever they would approach a merchant ship, however, they would unfurl their true pirate flag and plunder the merchant ship. Sometimes, though, they would attack and plunder while keeping up this false flag. False flag events in our world are events that happen where the true intention is hidden from the public. These events may be real events, or they may be events that never happened. But the response is always the same. Something bad happened, and something needs to be done about it. We will get into this concept later, more explicitly, in the Hegelian dialectic section. Nearly every mass shooting in our world leads to some sort of call for gun control legislation. You see these narratives rolled out almost immediately when a mass shooting occurs. So many of these shootings may meet the criteria of a false flag event. Quick disclaimer. Yes, I am aware that real people die and are affected by mass shootings. By discussing these events, I am in no way, shape, or form downplaying the pain and distress that have been inflicted on victims and the families of the victims. On the contrary, I believe it is important to discuss the true reasons these individuals died. It would be a disservice to their memory to continue to believe the false narrative around the events that caused their deaths. Now let's talk about some examples from a USA Today article which chronicled mass shooting events and the subsequent legislative efforts that ensued. Some of these legislative actions passed, and some did not. But in all cases, there was always some sort of legislative response. Let's discuss four events. Event 1. Shooting, April 2007, Virginia Tech. Legislation, January 2008. Improvement of background checks, eligibility of gun ownership for the mentally ill, and domestic violence offenders. This passed. The time from the shooting to legislation, eight and a half months. Event number two, shooting, June 2015, Charleston Church. Legislation, October 2015, closing the Charleston loophole around background checks and timing issues. This failed. Time from shooting to legislation, four months. Event number three, shooting, December 2015, San Bernardino Health Department. Legislation, December 2015. No fly, no buy. Cannot buy guns if on terror list. This failed. Time from shooting to legislation, one day. And then finally, event number four. Shooting, June 2016, Orlando Nightclub. Legislation, June 2016. No fly, no buy, again, and universal background checks. This failed. Time from shooting to legislation, eight days. Looking at the time from shooting to legislation from oldest to newest, you will see a pattern. Legislation has started to get proposed quicker and quicker after mass shootings. If you've ever read legislative documents, you'll know that they are not a quick read. Dare I say that it's almost as if there is prior knowledge of the event by the politicians? For all we know, this legislation could have been written in advance of the crime. This is all speculation, of course, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. The most concerning thing about gun control laws is that they seemingly don't do much to curb future shootings. From my vantage point, these measures seem to disproportionately affect non-criminal gun owners who are legally exercising their Second Amendment rights to own firearms. What do gun control laws do about illegal gun ownership? The answer, of course, is absolutely nothing. What do gun control laws do to stop criminals who want to be criminals from being criminals? Again, absolutely nothing. Gun control laws just make the average citizens more vulnerable to attack from criminals who don't care about the process of legal gun ownership. They can still get their guns from the black market if gun ownership is outlawed by the state. Again, it's never about safety. It's always about control.
Gun control takes on a whole different meaning when it comes to the Star Wars universe. Palpatine never tried to outright ban guns, but he did need to try to ban the Jedi, which I consider to be the firearms of the Star Wars universe. Think of the Jedi as the AR-15s of the people. They have force powers which allow them to do things that average citizens cannot. The people relied on the Jedi to protect them from injustices and evildoers, even from the government itself. In order to truly take over the galaxy, Palpatine needed direct controls over the people. He needed to remove the Jedi, who were the metaphoric bubble wrap protecting the fragile package of galactic citizens, so that he could directly inflict the full force, pun intended, of the Empire's oppression on the people. We'll discuss the specific event that led to the Jedi's demise in future sections, but the gun control metaphor here is clear. Both guns and Jedi can be used to protect people, and those in charge want to strip that layer of protection.